Welcome everyone to this video by Learn Civil Engineering where we will be learning how to solve internal forces within truss members using the method of sections. The method of sections is great for solving larger truss structures quickly and simply. Consider this truss which is in equilibrium. It is being supported by a hinge at point A and a roller at point G. Every horizontal and vertical bar is 5 metres long and therefore using Pythagoras theorem we can work out that each diagonal bar is approximately 7.07 .07 metres in length. All bars are connected to one another via hinges, but we already knew that this must be the case for a truss. And finally, we have a vertical downwards load of 10 kN being applied to node J, and a vertical downwards load of 15 kN being applied to node L. For this example, we are going to use the method of sections to determine the internal forces in bars 3, 12 and 19. The first step for the method of sections is to calculate the reaction forces at the supports. Assuming sensors for the support reaction forces, we have a horizontal and vertical force at the hinge support and only a vertical force at the roller support. As we have seen many times before, we apply the conditions of equilibrium, where the sum of all horizontal forces must be equal to zero, the sum of all vertical forces must be equal to zero, and the sum of all moments relative to a point must be equal to zero, and we will choose node A to take the moments about. For the sum of all horizontal forces, we only have R A X, and so R A X is equal to zero. For the sum of all vertical forces, and taking the y coordinate direction to be positive, we have R A Y plus R G Y minus 10 minus 15 equals zero. And then taking the sum of all moments relative to node A, whilst taking the anticlockwise rotation direction to be positive, we get RGY times 30 minus 10 times 15 minus 15 times 25 equals 0. As equation 3 just has one unknown, which is RGY, we will rearrange for RGY, which equals 525 divided by 30, which equals 17.5 kilonewtons. And then we can substitute this value for RGY into equation 2. Doing so and then rearranging for RAY, we get RAY equals 10 plus 15 minus 17.5, which equals 7.5 kilonewtons. So now we can write these forces onto our diagram and we can conclude that there is a vertical reaction force of 7.5 kilonewtons being applied in the upwards direction at node A and there is a vertical reaction force of 17.5 kN being applied in the upwards direction at node G. Having calculated the support reaction forces, we must now divide the structure into two parts by making a cut along the bars that we're interested in. This method of cutting the bars that we're interested in is very useful as there's no need to solve the entire structure, saving us a lot of time. As we're interested in bars 3, 12 and 19, those are the bars we will cut, and so the cut will follow this line. For this example, we will now only focus on the left part of the structure, so we are left with this, and we will draw on the internal forces as extensions from the middle of the cut bars like so. Note here that we are assuming the senses of the internal forces to be tensile, as they are in the direction towards the end of the bars. We must still think of this structure as a single standing structure, where the conditions of equilibrium still apply, and so the sum of all horizontal forces, the sum of all vertical forces, and the sum of all moments must be equal to zero. The internal forces in the cut bars, F3, F12 and F19, are what stabilise the reactions and external forces being applied to the structure. Considering only the left part of the structure and taking the anticlockwise rotation direction to be positive, the sum of all moments relative to node J is equal to negative 7.5 times 15 plus F3 times 5 equals 0. We have chosen node J to take the moment about as it allows us to isolate one of the unknowns. F19 and F12 both pass through node J and therefore do not cause a moment relative to node J. Therefore, as we only have the one unknown, we can already solve it. And doing so, we get... F3 is equal to 7.5 times 15, all divided by 5, which equals 22.5 kN. Also note here that F3 is positive, and as we assumed all our unknowns to be tensile, 
we can conclude that F3 is in fact a tensile internal force of magnitude 22.5 kN, and so bar 3 is under tension. Now, taking the y coordinate direction to be positive, the sum of all vertical forces is equal to 7.5 minus 10 minus F12 times sine 45, which equals 0. Again, we only have one unknown in this equation, so we can solve it straight away. And rearranging for F12, F12 is equal to 7.5 minus 10, all divided by sine 45, which equals negative 3.45 kilonewtons. In this instance, as our internal force is negative, that must mean that bar 12 is under compression. Finally, taking the x-coordinate direction to be positive, the sum of all horizontal forces is equal to F3 plus F19 plus F12 times cosine 45, which equals 0. As we have already determined the magnitudes of F3 and F12, we can simply substitute them into the equation. Doing this and then rearranging for F19, we get F19 equals negative 22.5 minus negative 3.54 times cosine 45, which equals negative 20 kilonewtons. So we can conclude that bar 19 is also under compression. And now, writing these forces onto our diagram gives a visual representation of the result. This method can be summarised into simple steps for ease of remembering. Firstly, start by calculating the reactions at the supports. Then make a slice through the members you wish to solve. Treat the part of the structure as its own static truss, and solve the truss by taking the sum of forces to equal zero. And finally, take the moment relative to a node with more than one unknown members. As a challenge, why don't you have a go at solving some of the other members in the truss? You're welcome to pause the video here and give it a go, and I'll show the internal forces for the remaining bars in a few seconds. Here are the internal forces for each bar then. Well done if you did attempt any further bars, and if you got them correct. This has been a video by Learn Civil Engineering. If you have found this video useful at all, please leave a like and subscribe to the channel to show your support. If you do have any remaining questions, or would like me to cover a specific topic, please leave them in the comment section below, and I will try to respond as soon as possible. Thank you for watching.